Hello, and welcome to TRC Talks. I'm Casey Novak, Marketing Director at TRC and your host. Today's utility and communications infrastructure is being challenged to support a growing demand to deploy services, including support for utility automation, broadband, and 5G networks. As pole space becomes more limited and the urgency is evident, overloading and overcrowding is possible. One solution is attaching fiber in the power distribution or supply space to mitigate conflict. To discuss the challenges, benefits, and safety considerations of attaching fiber in the supply space, I have with me Brenda Sears, Operations Director for Telecommunications Engineering, and David McCullough, Support Services Manager for Distribution Engineering. So let's get started with a question for you, David. From a contractual perspective, what are some of the first things that a utility should consider when thinking about attaching fiber in the supply space? Well, once a utility decides to install their own fiber, the utility should consider all the pros and cons of attaching in the supply space versus the communication space, such as the make ready cost, SAG data, and of course, having qualified electrical workers uh, for both installation and maintenance when working within the supply space. Also, what will these fibers be used for? What are your long-term and short-term goals? But having your own fiber on your own poles for your own needs would likely have a minimal, if any, contractual implications. If your fiber is of a commercial or competitive business venture, then there may be likely uh, some regulatory or other considerations that need to be evaluated. And Brenda, can you tell us about the engineering considerations? Sure, from an engineering perspective, the utility wants to think about their assets, primarily their poles, what state they're in, what kind of shape they're in, and what is already on those poles. So having a company such as TRC complete an of the moment audit and or perform some surveys with clearance and loading analyses, that'll give the utility the best perspective and into the existing state of their assets. So are there rules about what kind of fiber can go in the supply space? David can definitely chime in as well, but the NESC, specifically in Rule 230, does detail the requirements for what types of communications attachments can go in the supply space. There seems to be a good bit of misconception about this, and many people believe these fibers must be totally dielectric. But as Brenda mentioned, Rule 230, And if you drill down to 230F1, there's a broader description that also includes fiber supported on messengers as long as they're effectively grounded. So where in this supply space should a utility place their fiber cables? These can be placed either above or below the neutral. It's up to the utility. Make ready costs and cable properties are often factors in making that decision. When the supply space fiber is built below the neutral, it is treated the same as a neutral for clearance purposes. Therefore, many utilities choose to place this uh, fiber within 10 inches of the neutral. Since communication cables are commonly placed 40 below the neutral, this allows the 30 inch exception that's provided for in table 235.5 and minimizes the need for rearrangements. Again, speaking from the NESC perspective, the NESC doesn't specify a clearance between neutral conductors meeting Rule 230E1 and insulated communication cables in the supply space that are supported by an effectively grounded neutral. In most cases, it's up to the utility to set the standard for how far from their neutral or secondary or equipment their communication attachment should be placed. As we mentioned earlier, the factor that usually comes into play involves the clearance from the utility comm to any third party attachments. It's as though a new communication worker safety zone is being established. Can a utility put dielectric cables in the communication worker safety zone? The NESC does allow for a few exceptions for what can be put in the communication worker safety zone, but pole to pole utility fiber or ADSS is not one of those exceptions. 
code defines supply space cables and communication cables, not communications worker safety zone cables. With this in mind, if you're transitioning from one space to the other, the code requires the transition to take place at the pole, not in the mid span. As I mentioned earlier, if the utilities fibers are or become of a commercial or competitive nature, there are many other aspects that will need to be taken into consideration. Thank you both for your insights on this topic. And viewers, please stay tuned for future discussions with Brenda and David about what happens when fiber in the power space is providing a service to the public. Thanks for watching TRC Talks.